Um, <laughs> let's um, let's carry on with the panel. And the next question is, and we'll start with you, Savar, on this one: is Are we ready for next season? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I don't, look. I, I don't think we're ready with anything. We haven't got the signings in we need. We've not we've not sorted out the defence. We don't have a defensive midfielder. Our players aren't match fit. Our players haven't had any time to get used to the manager's philosophy. Uh, no, we're not. Now, that doesn't mean it's all doom and gloom. I do think it means that we are going to have some short-term pain at the beginning of the season that I think fans are going to have to be very patient with. I know we've been really patient for many years, but you you can't go from, from the absolute dross we've been watching from the last four or five years to a really good football team after two preseason games, right? You, you just can't do it. 45 minutes in everyone's legs. Um, so, I mean, it, it just doesn't need to be a long answer. No, we, we are not ready. Even if we bring in all those players, even if we spend the cane money in the next week, we're not ready. Those, you know, the, the new goalie, the new goalie's had no chance to get used to his new back four because it's not there yet. A new yeah. back four hasn't had a chance to get used to the goalie. Um, what's the best midfield free? What's the best front free? I, I don't think we're ready at all. Um, but I'm just hoping that can, in, in a strange way, galvanise the team, pull together. But I think we're going to start the first game like a house on fire, pressing a lot of the ball. And then I think you might slowly but surely see us fade away. Mitch, have you ever seen a worse worst prepared pre-season than this pre-season I mean you know you got the Roma game you can't really do much about the Roma game because they pulled out for uh, reasons that was beyond our control Lion City Sailors gets put in instead you got the game uh, who uh, who decided to go to Thailand in the middle of like the height of the monsoon season and then to get back from the tour when that's gone completely wrong no game for 10 days and then you've got two games in the space of three days I mean who decided this and 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 don't forget that Barcelona game is five days before that Brentford game so I mean this is probably is is this the worst plan pre-season you've ever seen at Tottenham yeah it's it's a little bit worrying and I'm more concerned with I guess the strength of opposition um than than the number of games because when when you're implementing um, a new a new system and a new manager and new personnel, which which we have done, um, you want to see how that performs against similar standard of opponents that you're going to be playing across the season. I mean, have a look at the other Premier League teams pre seasons. You know, you had that summer series where you've had Brentford, Brighton, Chelsea, uh, Newcastle all playing in in the summer series against each other over in the states. You've had United um, and <laughs> Arsenal playing against top teams as well. Um, Whereas we we have really just not, have we? I mean, the, the Shakhtar game um, on Sunday, I guess, yes, they're, they're a half-decent opposition, but I'd argue they're not really Premier League standard necessarily or up to a standard that we're going to be playing week in, week out. And then the Barcelona game, I'm not even sure we're going to take a proper squad to that because of how close it is to the start of the season. It would be... <sighs> I would I would suggest it would be a little bit irresponsible to take him away midweek in the lead up to that Brentford game and then to have him back you'll have like maybe one or two training sessions and then the Brentford game's there. Yes, on the other side of things it'll give you match fitness, but you know, it seems like a lot in a short space of time. So yeah, like you said, the Rome the Roma game's out of our hands and, and the Leicester one, yeah, I mean I know a lot of clubs go out um, to Asia on, on their pre-season tour and there's obvious reasons behind it with the marketing and, and um, the support that we have out there because of um, because of who we've got at the club obviously but it, it does feel like I've barely watched Tottenham this this summer um, you know I usually you get to the stage in in July and you, you're people are on their holidays you know oh, I've the Spurs pre-season game on my phone while I'm, while I'm sitting next to the pool or whatever and um, you haven't really had must that. Must be nice, week. Mitch. Must be nice. Yeah, <laughs> I've dealt with that. Um, but yeah no, it's, it's, it's pretty un underwhelming. And I guess that leads to the overall sense of a lot of people don't really know what to expect. I mean, Savile was talking about it as well. We might well see us go out and press really high and energetically against Brentford. And then we might end up just dying off um, in that game because of a lack of fitness and because of a lack of practice and and putting motions into play in the new system, in the new formation. So, 
Um, worrying, um, but hopefully it doesn't take too long into the season. Because I think we've got to accept the consequence now that we might start the season slowly. Um, and we've just got to hope that it only takes a couple of games to get up to speed with, with how Ange wants us to play. Yeah, I mean, it is really frustrating because I'm looking at the preseason of the teams you're talking about out in America in the summer series. I'm looking at Arsenal and Manchester United and I'm watching these games and they're proper intense games, like Premier League standing games. And we're like hardly even playing. When we do playing, we're playing the Lion City Sailors and, you know, West Ham in our first game back. And how West frustrating is it? How, yeah, West Ham beating. How frustrating is that for you, Sim? Very frustrating. And especially, it was actually, it was a weird, it's a weird thing this summer. Everyone seems to be really taking the friendlies seriously, I've noticed, like when I'm watching the games. The games are fast-paced. They're not played at a friendly pace. Yeah. These are these are teams who are serious about getting ready for the new season, don't want to walk into the season and still um, be at that at that pace where they're walking around as if it's a friendly. They're, they're literally playing the friendly games as if they're competitive Premier League fixtures. And it's been exciting. There's been goals. Um, galore in these friendlies. It's been feisty. The players have been angry. Cards. Red cards. It's been really, really good to see. And it's been a massive, massive shame that Tottenham haven't been involved in that. And our games have been completely different to that. And we, we yes, it's been nice to see Postacoglu's um, tactics and system take place. And the small bits we've seen has been game. But you've got to remember, even within our games, we've only had 45 minutes for each thing and then they get changed so what mm. have we actually seen that we haven't even seen 90 minutes or or even 70 minutes of our first team what they would look like after 45 minutes the whole 11 gets changed and it's like a completely new game at this point so it's almost like we've played four half games rather than two games that's kind of like what what, what the feeling is and the the i think the, the planning of this football club i mean not just the pre-season which has been diabolical in my opinion and as i was saying having to, and also what just to touch on what mitchell was saying actually before when he says in terms of the squad we're going to take to barcelona i think it was actually fairly interesting and then if you saw ben davis on instagram a few days ago he took a picture with a few of his, a few of his teammates he said getting ready for the last pre-season game uh, uh, which was for Sunday. Oh, really? Is that um, what he so said? Maybe, so maybe that is an indication that he we aren't intending... Or he looked, maybe it was that he could have just been wrong and he just forgot about the Barca game. But maybe it, could, it could have been... <laughs> uh, but it could have I forgot been I had a flight to Barcelona <laughs> yeah. next week. It could have been. That's also, <laughs> I wouldn't put it past uh, in his rules. But maybe that is an indication that the, like, the team we are sending to Barcelona isn't going to be too strong. That could, be, that could be possible as well. And to, well, what Saf was saying, to have, to have this 10-day break for no reason and then... Sh- Sandwich in two preseason games within four year hours is absolute madness. I just don't uh, understand that as well. Can I, can I just? I think the the key thing for me more than any of this is a lot of those clubs as well aren't going out with a new manager. I know mm-hmm. Chelsea are with, with Pochettino, but a lot of those clubs aren't going out with a new manager. So they're going out. The, 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 the teams pretty much know how they play. They're going there for fitness. They're going there for sharpness. Spurs. This was more important to us. Other than Chelsea, I don't think anyone else has changed their manager. Someone might tell me if I'm wrong, but I think this was the most important to us because it wasn't just about the fitness. By the way, I don't care about preseason results. I don't think that has any bearing on anything. I remember under one day Ramos, we battered everyone. I think we battered Roma like 7-1 and then took two points from eight games. Is that when Darren Bent scored like 15 goals in preseason? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) Super Darren Bent. Give him time. Bring him back. He deserves another (laughs) chance. Um, I, I just feel that it is very much about fitness. But on top of that, I feel that definitely for those Spurs players that have had it drummed into them to play this Conte Jose style for so many years, that they needed as much game time as possible, uh, as much game uh, training time as possible. For me, the club should have bit the bullet on any kind of revenue from endorsements, from marketing, stayed in London played as many games locally as possible. I don't care. Play QPR, play West Ham uh, in, in London, play Chelsea, play whoever. Have have as many games locally as possible, but make sure the players aren't spending half their time flying around the world, doing press junkets constantly in Singapore, Thailand, Australia. Let's let's remember we're a football team. Yeah, so I feel like we've, we've literally travelled all the way around the world for the players to have 90 minutes in their legs. If you let that sink in, I know there'll be people going, oh, Savas really negative and blah. 90 minutes, that's not a pre-season. Yeah. That's, it's not a pre-season. 
So, look, it's going to be really interesting to see how that affects players. Um, but it's not ideal. Would be the uh, I know, and yeah, and it's not even, and not even just from a preseason point of view. Is it not? Are we not ready? We've got so much, uh, so many players whose futures probably look elsewhere out of Tottenham, still at the club. Joe Roden, um, Davidson, Sanchez, Hugo Lloris was left Paris. at home Lloris, to find yeah. the club. <laughs> Lloris is still, so Lloris is still here, yeah. and Don Bele's future is up in the air. Um, uh, the uh, Spence probably is going to go on loan. We, we're hearing there's just so there's so many players um, whose futures also up in the air. And to, to, on top of that, no new centre backs in as well to get them ready for the new season and get them acclimatised to a new defence. Vicario probably doesn't know who he's going to be playing um, behind right now. Um, all these different aspects, obviously Harry Kane's future as well. You can add that into the mix, but that's more understandable. We can add that also into the mix. We don't know who's going to be starting the season up front right now. So in on the pitch and off the pitch, we've just been like planning wise, it's just been a complete mess yeah. of um, this whole preseason. And as much as there was positivity at the start when Postacoglu came in and Vicario, Solomon and Madison came in in quick succession, you're thinking, okay, something's happening here. We've just completely let it fe fester. Now we're in a situation where we're 10 days before the let or 10 days or less, less than 10 now. days nine days the, I think. Before, before the season starts and there is just so much uncertainty and that's just not what a new manager wants and I don't I, I don't know if it's just me I don't know if anyone else has picked up on this but has anyone else like noticed a twinge of a frustration in Posto Congolese demeanor over the last like few like, last week or so I think like when he first started it was a bit more jovial when he was like ready to go I've just noticed in some of the things he said and some of his mannerisms like there's just a bit of frustration seeping into him is it just me I don't know if anyone else noticed that he has yeah he, he he's he's you can tell by his comments can't you like he made he made comments on the centre-back situation um the other week saying you know if it was up to me, I'd have him over here quickly, but he knows that's not how it works. And naturally the Kane thing will be be frustrating as well. And alongside those com comments came the reports that he would like the situation resolved quickly, which I think all of us would, um, to be honest. So I think he's probably, probably a little bit frustrated as well. Again, just because of how close we are to the start of the season and we haven't addressed really any of the problems that are still at the club. We haven't got rid of the Deadwood that uh, was promised to us at the end of the season. We haven't sorted the Kane saga. We haven't brought in the centre-backs. Um, and, you know, it, there might also be stuff behind the scenes. We don't necessarily know, you know, who who who's to say that Vicario was his first choice goalkeeper, you know? Was he really set on bringing someone like David Raya in, into the club and he had to settle for... Vicario instead because because Brentford were asking for too much money. Um, you know, are there other targets that he still wants to bring in this summer that have either been declined or they're waiting? Um, I think there's just a lot of uncertainty around the whole thing. And you, you've got to remember as well that he's taken a step up in his career and and the pressure and expectation at a club like Spurs is is big. Obviously at at a club like Celtic, who, of course, I'm not, I'm not trying to offend Celtic, are, are still a big club. But you know, you're you're in a two horse race in in the Scottish league, and if you can have a decent run in Europe, then brilliant. Um, but when you come into the Premier League and, and you're managing a club like Spurs, who are competing against the teams around us with your Cities, your Arsenal's, United's, Chelsea's, there's always going to be one or two of those teams that are going to have really good seasons, even if some of the others are potentially not necessarily on the boil, like Chelsea weren't last season. There's not a guarantee they're going to be great this season, but the likelihood is they're going to be better than what they were. Um, but what's the expectation still amongst both the fan base and I guess the, the board is to be challenging for the European places and ideally get Champions League football and challenge for a trophy. And if you don't provide them with those tools to, to be able to build a squad that's good enough to challenge on those fronts um, because you've got to remember that every other team around us has strengthened their squad this summer already um, then you can see why he's maybe getting a little bit frustrated um, and I think he's he's very straight talking and I think he's naturally quite a positive person um, and I hope that he sort of maintains that image and, and when we're getting into the regular press conferences every single week with the games he's he's someone that sort of tries to get the fans on side with the words that he he says and, and goes in an opposite direction of what Conte did towards the end of, of his tenure at the club. Mm. And for, for all the like 
expectations for as much as like I don't think from Tottenham fans' point of view, like there's not many expectations on Postacoglu in this this season in terms of like where we finish and stuff like that. Obviously, we would like like minimum, I guess, top six, but there's no like no fans gonna expect like a Champions League finish wherever wherever this season. But at the end of the day, the board have their the board have always been notoriously high um, high high expectations. They always had that, and Postacoglu. However much his his main task from Tottenham, from a fans' point of view, is to boot, to set in this rebuild, a new way of playing and stuff like that, he's all he is going to be based on results, and anything that stops him from from getting as much preparation to get the best results possible is going to frustrate him. And the board and aren't at the end of the season aren't going to turn around and say. Oh, the results were rubbish, but a great rebuild, mate. Great rebuild, but bad results. They're not going to do that. They're going to say the results are bad and you're accountable for that. And that, that's going to frustrate him that the season's about to start and he's not in the best place to get the best results. Every manager always falls on the same sword here at Tottenham Hotspur. You know, they don't get what they need and they get they get blamed for it. Uh, that's that's the facts of the matter, right, Sava? Yeah, look, I, I think that I think where a lot of people thought it would be different, and it still could be different. It still could be. I think where a lot of people thought it would be different with Postacoglu is he's not even asking, like, Conte wants your bastonies, right? Conte wants your 70, 80 million pound bastonies from your Inter Milan's who are at clubs, big clubs, winning things, Champions League final. You know, I, I don't think that's expected. He wants your Nicola Barella's, you know, your Lautaro yeah. Martinez's. That's, that's not going to happen at Tottenham. I think here, though, we were like, oh, Van der Ven. Good young player, Wolfsburg, not even in Europe. Surely we can do that. And you're like six, seven weeks into the window going, still can't do that. Tap sober, good player. But again, you, you wouldn't put him in the bracket of the top centre-halves in world football, but a very good defender. Can't do that. You know, it was in fans' eyes, it was David Rea from Brentford. Right, we can't even go to Brentford now and get a player. So, yeah, look, it, it is difficult for any manager coming in. Um, it looks to me that he's made of stern stuff. Um, it really does look to me that he, he, he's, you know, I think he's a man's man, right? I, I feel like yeah. he's not going to throw his toys out the pram. I don't think we're going to get the press conferences that are all about him the way we did with Jose and with Conte. Um, and look, he needs time. I'm really hoping, 23 years in, I'm really hoping that Daniel Levy and that have learnt the lesson of even if the manager goes through a rough patch, which he's going to, at some point he's going to, first of all, the fans <laughs> need to be patient because if you are going to build a philosophy, it doesn't just happen overnight. Look at Arsenal, eighth, eighth, fifth, second, yeah. right? And now is even tougher. The league now is there's more teams up there with money, Newcastle, Villa, Brighton, Chelsea, Man City, you know. Um, so he needs time. <laughs> the the proverbial time that a manager needs. He needs patience. Um, but ultimately, when you're not asking for the world's best, if Levy can't even provide that, then what are we doing here? Like, if this Van der Ven deal falls through, I think fans who, who still haven't hit their breaking point, I suppose, with the owners, are going to look and go, hang on, what, we can't even get a 22-year-old who's had one year in Germany for a team that aren't even in Europe. Yeah. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but questions will need to start being answered. Yeah, absolutely. And and back on Ange's frustrations, we've heard that the press conference tomorrow before the Shakhtar game has been called off because of apparent lack of interest is what they're calling it. I mean, Mitch, are you buying that for one second? No. No, there's that's that that can't that can't be the reason. I don't see how there could be a lack of interest around Tottenham at the moment with everything that's going on. I mean, even if it's negative media, it's still media attention, isn't it? So you yeah. imagine that there are enough journalists that want to be there to ask questions. Um, you know, there's loads of stuff they could ask about about the club at the moment with Kane, about Simon's defenders, how how are you feeling ahead of the Prem? You know the Solomon deal and and playing Shakhtar. There, there's got to be something else behind it. I, do, I don't know if I believe it, but I saw a story about something something it, about it being Ange's idea that he wants to sort of cancel it to um, have a sort of hit back about the whole media response to this Kane saga with everyone picking up and and fueling the rumors. Again, I don't know 
how much of that is truthful, whether any of it is at all. But I, yeah, I, I sh- I'm struggling with that one because you know a, a club like Spurs, there's always media attention around around the club, even if there's not too much going on at that, at that time. So um, you know, you have you have journalists from papers and, and sites that are dedicated to reporting on Spurs, and, and that's their only job. So you know, there's probably enough of them on their own to get into the press room and, and report on that. So yeah, not buying it. And I won I do wonder whether we will find out what the actual reason in, is behind it at some point. Yeah, I've got a week before the the, the when the season starts. I've got a feeling it's to do it's revolving Harry Kane. Exactly. The even, even they just had a big meeting around Kane. It's a week before the season starts. There's all this talk about new centre backs and stuff coming in. They are te- they're telling us there's a lack of interest. Yeah, literally, oh, it's probably on. like the heightened <laughs> point of interest right now, especially with the media and Harry Kane. I mean, Savvy, are you buying this one? <laughs> I don't know anymore. I don't know. Um, do you know one thing I always talk with Henry about is. Have you ever known a club as unsuccessful as ours that has so much controversy and media coverage as ours? Mm-hmm. Like, I get it. When Man, when something at Man United happens, it's huge. They're the, one of the biggest clubs in world football. And, oh, my God, Ronaldo this. And, you know, they need a new stadium and the owners and the protests. We're a club that for 15 years have just sat here and done nothing. Like, we haven't won anything. <laughs> and we are in the news Year in, year out, month in, month out, new managers, new directors of football, our owners committing fraud, our director of football's committing fraud. Um, Conte's throwing every player in the world under the bus. Jose Mourinho, uh, he, he's, he's on an Amazon documentary telling players that they're rubbish and he targeted them during Europa League finals. I, I, I just, I've never known anything like it, guys. I, I genuinely don't understand how... We're not a bigger club than we are with the amount of coverage that we get. So I don't buy it. Um, I, I, I don't. I mean, Andrew already, just to, to go back to a point you made just now, he just, I think he, he you know, he looks a little bit deflated uh, compared to when he first started. And I think now he's realising what it is like to work with, with Daniel Levy. But Sava, it doesn't take these man. I mean, managers are starting to cotton on more quickly and more quickly as the new managers come in. I mean, Conte came in with his eyes, um, you know, shining going into that stadium and into that training ground. And then a few weeks after, he was like, now I realise what's going on here. Yeah. At <laughs> Look, Jose Mourinho was something similar. And now I'm supposed to cogu already. The enthusiasm seems to have dropped a little bit. They'll all, they'll all know, right, guys? They'll all, they'll all know. That it's, not, it's not as though... It's not as though Ange Postacoglu has been living under a rock. It's not as though these talks with Tottenham wouldn't have been happening for months, right? About you joining, his team would have done their research. They would have watched DVDs, watched videos of players. They would all this kind of stuff. They know what they're getting themselves into. The, the the more worrying thing for me about any of this is, with all that being said, why did so much of this Deadwood have to go on the tour? Yeah. Like, what? Why did so many of them go? Like, like Spence has gone right and not had a minute of football, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, why are we doing that? Why are Dyer? I mean, maybe not Dyer because he's Joe Roden was there. Joe Roden, you know, we, we've not seen these players. Wouldn't you have rather have seen like Dorrington or yeah. Sayers or, or I don't know? Like, it, it, it's all. I don't know. It's all a bit weird and it just always lends itself back to that fear, theory or whatever that that Levy runs the show completely and the managers don't seem to have full control over everything that's going on. Um, and the fact that Harry Winks is the only footballer to have left this club in six to seven weeks. Um, yeah. Strap yourselves in. Long season ahead, gents. It's going to be good for streaming. 